Hey everybody, welcome to a follow-up lecture on the idea of energy, particularly around the idea of conservation of energy. And we're going to look at two very specific examples around conservation of energy. The first is the idea of a pendulum. Now a pendulum is basically anything that you attach to a string or a rod or something like that, some sort of mass, and you allow it to simply swing back and forth. Now to begin with, it has to be pulled back to a certain height, okay, which exists here at point A. And then it's released, allowed to swing down, goes past point B, and comes back up to some height on the other side here at point C. Now how does all of this relate to the idea of energy, conservation of energy, things like that? Well, first of all, back here at point A, let's go back to those questions we need to ask ourselves. Do I have height? Do I have motion? Well, if I pull it back here and hold it at rest, well, I definitely have height, but I don't have any motion. So my total energy here at part A has to all be gravitational potential energy. Now, I let it go and let it swing down to point B. Now here's an interesting thing, of course, about height. Notice that the height I've measured, H1 and H2, is measured relative to point B, even though maybe the ground is actually all the way down here. Well, again, remember, potential energy is a very relative thing. So that even though the ground may be way down here, we can actually move the ground to where point B is, because the pendulum will never get any lower than that point. So as far as we're concerned, wherever the lowest point the pendulum reaches, we're going to call that the ground, regardless of where the ground actually is. Which means, if point B is the location of the ground, do I have height? No. But will the pendulum be in motion? Yes, it will be in motion. So my total energy here at point B has to be all kinetic energy. Now, it swings back up to point C and has to come to a stop. Because remember, in order to change directions and go back the other way, we've got to stop first. So if it stops for an instant at point C, do I have height? Yes, I do again. But do I have motion? No. So my total energy over here at point C is again all gravitational potential energy. And it sort of keeps going back and forth like that. But notice I've marked off point D here, kind of partway between A and B. Now at point D, is there height? Yes. But would it also be in motion? Yes. Now, I just answered yes to both of those. So that means that the total energy at D has to be potential and kinetic, because I answered yes to both of those. And that is possible to have. But the most important part of a pendulum is that it conserves energy, which means the total energy at point A is equal to the total energy at point B is equal to the total energy at point C is equal to the total energy at point D. In other words, if I have 100 joules of total energy at A, I have 100 at B, 100 at C, 100 at D, I have 100 joules of total energy everywhere. Now, that doesn't mean I have 100 potential or 100 kinetic everywhere, but it means my total is 100. Let's look at a kind of physical example of a pendulum using this skateboarder on a track here, because it's going to act in the same way. Now again, as you can see on the graph over here on the right, there's no energy at this moment. So I'm going to bring him up here to about 4 meters. Okay. Now notice, at this point, he has all potential energy, and his total energy and his potential energy are equal to the same amount. Now if we let him go back and forth, notice what's happening over here with the energies. Okay? they are exchanging from potential to kinetic and back to potential again. So at the centermost point, right here, we have all kinetic energy and basically no potential energy. But at each extreme, in other words we're back at 4 meters here, all potential energy, And notice right here, my speed goes to zero. I have all potential energy again here. And oh, notice, I'm back at four meters again. Okay? 
So the whole time the total energy remained constant. The kinetic end potential shifted from one to the other, um, where here were all potential energy, in the center were all kinetic, and at the other end were all potential. However, part way down, say when he gets right about here, oh, notice that it's a combination of kinetic and potential energy because there is both height and there is, in mo there is motion. So basically it's acting just like the pendulum. So, for example, let's say we have a pendulum that we pull back to a height of 2 meters above the ground. We're going to let it swing down, and we want to know how fast is it going when it reaches its lowest point, its sort of ground. Well, again, up here at the beginning, do I have height? Yes. So I have gravitational potential energy. Do I have motion yet? No, assuming we release it from rest. So that's the only energy I have. When I reach the lowest point, since it's the lowest point, I don't have height, but I am in motion. So down here, my total energy must all be kinetic. Conservation of energy says total energy equals total energy. At point one, we have gravitational potential energy. Point two, we have only kinetic energy. Potential energy is mgh. Kinetic energy is 1 half mass velocity squared. Now notice, I never gave you the mass of the pendulum, because it turns out it doesn't matter. Okay? It doesn't matter how big an object you tie at the end of that string. They're all going to have the same velocity at the end. So I have gravity is 10, a height of 2. Multiply through by 2. I get 40 is v squared, or v is 6.32 meters per second. That's really all there is to it. Not too difficult. Now, another object that exhibits conservation of energy is the idea of a roller coaster. If you've ever been on roller coasters, you may notice that the lift hill, the very first hill you're brought up to, is basically the highest point on the roller coaster. And it has to be. Because if you were to build another hill higher than that, it would never be able to get over that hill. So that one hill kind of dictates your whole ride. So if you look at the roller coaster up here, um, and we're going to look at three points. One here at the beginning. Two, when it reaches down here to the lowest point on their track. And three, as it's coming over this eight meter hill. And what I want to know is, how fast is the roller coaster going here at point two, and how fast is it going here at point three? Okay? So, let's look at each point and ask our questions. Point one, do I have height? Yes. So I have gravitational potential energy. But let's say it starts from rest, so do I have motion? No. So the only energy I have there is potential. Now, it comes down the hill to point two, the lowest point. So do I have height? No. Will it be moving? Yes. So I have kinetic energy here. Now, point three is the tricky one all the time. At point three, do I have height? Yes, clearly I do. There's a height given there. Now, do I have motion? I must have motion because I'm in between the ground and 20 meters. Okay, at 20 meters, height is the only place I'm going to have no motion. So anything less than that, I have to have motion. So there is motion here. So there is kinetic energy there at point three. Okay. So let's look at point two. And again, the total energy at one must equal the total energy at point two. Well, there's a couple different ways we can do this, but I want to do it this way. Let's look at that total energy at point one, which is potential, mgh. I have a mass of 100, gravity is 10, and a height of 20. That means that I have 20,000 joules of potential energy up there. But more importantly, I have 20,000 joules of total energy, which means I have 20,000 joules of total energy everywhere on the roller coaster ride. Everywhere. So now, 
If my total energy at 1 is 20,000 joules, and my total energy at 2 is made up of kinetic energy, well, that means I can say that that 20,000 joules is made up of the kinetic energy at point 2. 20,000 joules, my kinetic energy equation, 1 half mv squared, 20,000 joules, 1 half mass of 100, 50 v squared divide through by 50 that gives you 400 and when you take the square root we find our velocity at point 2 is 20 meters per second not too bad right now let's move over to point 3 now my total energy at 1 must equal my total energy at 2 but also most equal my total energy at 3. Now, here's the, probably the best way i found for people to approach this. I already know that total energy number. It's 20,000 joules everywhere. So I've got 20,000 joules. But at point 3, my energy consists of both potential and kinetic. Okay. Now, that means that that 20,000 is divided up somehow among that potential energy and that kinetic energy. So if we look at just the potential energy part, mgh, well it's 100 mass, gravity is 10, and at that point there's a height of 8, giving you 8,000 joules of potential energy. Okay. Now, if there's 20,000 joules of total energy and the potential energy is 8,000 of it well that means the leftover energy is 12,000 that must be your kinetic energy okay so in this equation and of course if you look at the way we've laid it out we now know 20,000 equals 8,000 of potential plus the remaining is kinetic energy or we have 12,000 joules of kinetic energy So v squared is 240, take the square root of both sides, and the velocity at point 3 comes out to be about 15.5 meters per second. And that actually makes a lot of sense because the car is on its way back up. Now remember, it was 20 meters per second at the lowest point, 0 at the highest. And since 8 meters is between those points, it makes sense that the speed is lower than 20 meters per second and obviously higher than 0. And that's sort of basically how that works. Now, to give you sort of a more physical look at this, we're going to put our skateboarder here on a roller coaster. Okay. So now notice, I'm going to start him right here at this sort of 4 meter mark. Okay. Now, that means he can get no more height than 4 meters. And notice this point right here, it's about 3 meters, and this is the lowest point. Okay, so let's watch what happens. Okay, so far, he has all potential energy, and that is his total energy. That's all he gets. So he heads down here. Now, stop right there, right there at the 3-meter mark. Okay, now he's losing some potential, gaining some kinetic. Total energy is the same. And notice his speed here is around a little, almost 2.5 right there. At the bottom, all the potential is pretty much gone. He now only has kinetic, and his speed is way up here at this value of about 5.5 or so. Okay. Now he starts heading back up. Now he reaches this point right here. Notice that he's lost kinetic, gained potential, and oh, that speed. It's right around the same speed what he was right here. Okay. So it's less than what it was at the bottom but higher than what it was where he began. Cruising along. And he slows and stops. Again, the highest height he could ever reach again is this 4 meters where he began, because that's all the energy he had for the entire ride. And basically after that, he'd end up rolling back, back up. So it kind of just keep going back and forth forever. Now again, this is the absence of friction.
Okay, and we'll talk a little later on what happens when really we put friction in in terms of energy. Okay, so that's basically the idea of conservation of energy around two important devices, a pendulum and a roller coaster. See you next time.